Hello, and welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Olo, and today, damn do I have a video for you. Ashes of War are, well, they're insanely powerful and possibly underrated by some. Not only can they change the affinity of your weapon to something much more effective and suitable for your build, so you should not be sleeping on them, but the actual effect of the Ash of War can be absolutely ludicrous. Today, I'm going to show you the best iframe dodge in the game, which is hilarious with a heavy weapon, the most broken early game Ash of War that you are currently seeing speedrunners use to kill bosses as fast as possible without really leveling up at all, or maybe our meta pick for bleed builds in which you can increase your attack power and increase the rate at which you proc a bleed stupidly quick. And of course, a guts cosplayer's dream with the true guts flip, not needing magic on that royal great sword. And finally, also a hilarious Mimi pick that is shockingly effective for clearing out packs of enemies. So let's get into it with our first Ash of War. Let's take a look then at Lion's Claw. This is just incredible. So many people have been saying about my Royal Greatsword build, like, hey, you know, that's the Guts flip and everything. But Guts doesn't use magic, obviously. I don't really want to do that. A lot of people were talking about this. You can literally do that with this. It's extremely effective. Watch. I'll take a hit. Hyper armor doesn't matter. I barely took any damage. I've got hyper armor, so the attack's just going to go through. I think this is a really effective combo attack for something slow like this. Now, these guys are really weak, so it's whatever. But with this weapon, right, you have the three-hit R1 combo. So two, three, and then I interrupt the recovery straight into the flip, which gives me hyper armor, and obviously it's a big hit. This against a big bad enemy, a boss enemy that's about to stagger you. You can do big damage with your triple combo, the standard, and then you follow it up with the flip, there you go, gives me hyper armor, he hit me, it doesn't matter, it's still going through. So if you want to do burst, that's great. And I think that's going to be incredible in PvP. So not only is this the legit, actual, guts flip, but it's got hyper armor and it's super effective. Also, yeah, it is like the third strongest strength weapon in terms of raw AR. You should not sleep on this great sword. Okay, so to get Lion's Claw Ash War then, you just need to come to Fort Gale, which is actually on the very western point of Kaelid. It's quite near the entrance, and the nearest uh, grace is the Fort Gale North Grace. We just need to enter the fort from the side and climb a ladder. From that point onwards, it's probably wise to clear out the mobs up top, but all you actually have to do to get the Ash of War is kill the lion down below in the center of the fort. Once you defeat him, hey, there is the Ash of War, and you've got it. All right, it's time for the Hoar Frost Stomp. This is arguably, I think, the strongest Ash of War I've seen in the game, especially in terms of early game or speed running potential. The absolute madness of this attack, how effective it is. And of course with frost buildup, right? I don't know if it works exactly the same, but if you get frostbite as the player, what happens is you get the debuff that means you take more damage now for a period while you're frostbitten. If that happens to enemies, which they do actually get the frostbitten effect, they do glow blue. If that makes them take more damage, this is absolutely ludicrous. Just look how effective this is. So it does the pop which interrupts them, and then the actual pop that does the damage. This is barely upgraded, this weapon. You can do it from safety on a mob. Look at that! You can do it from safety at range. I can target an enemy and do it from, like, downtown. Look at that! It does absolutely broken damage. I am not kidding. I was watching a charity stream from Elijah where they were doing a speed run thing where they were trying to kill as many bosses in a time frame as possible. This was the weapon they were using and this was the Ash of War they were using because it's just so ridiculous. That's why I truly believe that we're going to see a lot of Hawfrost Stomp when it comes to Elden Ring speed running. It's crazy strong. To get the Hawfrost Stomp then, we are going to need to come to the northern point of the Lakes of Leonia. It is up here in this pond or pool. It is a invisible scarab that you're going to have to hit. Uh, I do recommend with these that you follow the path and then stand where it's going to run and slap as it runs past you. Uh, unfortunately for me, I did not get footage of actually killing it and getting the Ash of War. I got it while not recording, but it is here in this location. Uh, the nearest grace is the main carrier Manor gate, and you just have to come to the east of that to this little pond or pool, uh, which is not too bad. It's quite easy to get. Now it's time for a Bloodhound step. 
this is a familiar one. I'm sure I mentioned it earlier, but this actually comes from Bloodborne. You used to have this old hunter's bone, and it gives you this incredible... I mean, look at it. Dodge. It is significantly more effective than your regular roll for a lot of reasons. Now, obviously, I'm using it on a big heavy weapon just for the laugh, but look at the roll, right? I can be hit during this roll on the sort of second half of it. Now, during all of this dash, the entire time that you cannot see my character, I have iframes. But it's got incredible travel distance. I think that's double the travel distance of an actual regular roll. So these guys can just not hit me. They just can't do it. They just cannot hit me while I'm doing this. It's ridiculous. These guys are spamming attacks on me. They're spamming attacks on me. And they just can't hit me. I've got too many iframes. So we take this to an actual enemy. Let's say these two bozos. Now keep in mind, this is a very low upgraded weapon. Oh, that other one's sleeping. So these guys are really quick and they gap close. Doesn't matter. Like, it just doesn't. And dodge. And dodge. And dodge. Like, my iframes just let me completely ignore the many attacks. If I was rolling there, I'm telling you, I get hit. 100%. And it's the spacing. Like, if I need to move around, get away from them. Like, look at that. I think a big part of it is just the fact that it lets me circle the enemy so effectively. Big enemies that are a problem that you're trying to get behind, you know. You got that movement. You got the speed. Because the range of that dash is so effective. And I'm using a heavy weapon intentionally here to show you that even though this is something you might use in a quick build, like a bleed build or whatever... It works surprisingly effectively on a slow swinging weapon because it's shocking how good this mobility is on a slower weapon. To get the Bloodhound step, you're going to need to kill one of the Knight's Cavalry, the mini bosses that you see around. They're riding these black horses. They're all in black and they're using different weapons and they only spawn at night. You need to come to Lens Rise, which is at the northeastern point of Kaelid here. And then on the bridge itself is going to be the knight that you're hunting. Now we need to kill him to actually get the Ash of War. And then once you kill him, that's it. You've got it. Easy peasy. Okay, speaking of bleed builds, Seppuku. This Ash of War is going to be extremely meta. I genuinely believe this is the strongest Ash of War for a bleed build. So we have a low upgraded bleed build weapon, right? So this causes blood loss by default, and it started at 55. Because this is an Ash of War with bleed affinity, I put that on it. So now it's up to 77. That's really high to say that this is a low upgraded weapon. When I actually use the Ash of War, I stab myself, consume a small amount of health, like look at that, it's barely anything, and then I get this buff. Now my attack power is higher while I've got the buff on, so that's incredible for a fast hitting weapon. While that's on, the bleed buildup is even higher, so even faster. So I've come here to see if I can get like an example of how many hits it's going to take. Two hits, three hits, four hits, and we've got a proc right there. Now against the high elf enemy like a dragon here, that was a significant amount of damage. So three hits, four hits, right there. Look at the damage. On a plus seven weapon. Let's prop it. There we go. Careful not to die because this thing does a lot of damage. This is no joke of an enemy and I'm using a plus seven weapon. Okay. One, two, three, four, and five, six. There it is. So as you can see, obviously, once I bleed, bleed the first time, the second time, it is getting a bit of a resistance, but it's only a couple extra hits. And we're again, we're talking about a plus seven weapon. The higher you upgrade, the better your bleed build up. So it just gets more effective on a better weapon and on a higher upgraded weapon. To get Sabuku, then, it's a little bit late game. We are looking, of course, at the mountaintops of the Giants. This is the super frosty ice region at the northeastern point of Elden Ring as a whole. And you must come to the Freezing Lake, which is not too far into the region, just after you cross the first main bridge and make your way north. And you're going to have to kill a invisible scarab running around in this area here. It's a bit of an annoying one. I recommend you just find the route that it goes and then stand where it's running in a straight line for a while and just hit it as it's running past you like I did. All right, so let's demonstrate the 
the lightning ram. As you can see, I'm thick as hell. I'm literally wearing the heaviest armor that I can possibly be wearing right now. The reason for that is I don't need to be able to evade with this ash of war. Uh, as you can see, I'm fat rolling, but it doesn't matter at all. Let me show you. It's so funny. Now, obviously, these are weak enemies, but I mean, here, look at this clip of me while I organize these guys. Doing it to high-level enemies in the plateau. Like, it's- this is ridiculous. I've not done anything to the skill, I've not created a build that's good for it. I just put on some heavy armor and just use it, and it- as much as this is a meme, as much as it's a joke, it's really effective, it's really strong. And it's maybe the funnest Ash of War I've seen in the game. Alright, now back to this, I, I've, I've herded them up, here we go. So you tap it, and you roll, and then you just tap it and spam it. Now it costs FP every time you roll, and it costs stamina every time you roll. So I do run out of a bit of stamina, and I've got to stop for a sec, and then I run out of FP, and I've got to recover that. But actually, you can still do it while you have no FP. It's just obviously you're not going to have the lightning effect. That doesn't mean it's still, you know, it's completely ineffective. It just means you don't have the lightning effect. So here you go. Look, I have no FP left. So I can still do it, using just stamina, and it still does good damage. Not every- not even every enemy is weak to lightning, so... It's ridiculous. And also I... <laughs> I make a ram sound, so... You can't really do better than this, right? It's shockingly good. I want to see people use this in PvP. Last but not least, then, we have the Lightning Ram Ash of War. This is the Altus Plateau. It is fairly close to the first bonfire that you're going to get here, uh, just after the second one. It's up here on this hill, which is a bit awkward to get to, to be fair. You can come to the Rampart side path, or even go get the Scented Hero's Grave, but the location is right here on this mini plateau. It is a roaming scarab that you're going to have to kill, and it's surrounded by some Lightning Goats who are using the Ash of War, in fact, flipping and spinning and rolling around to try and attack you while you're in this area. But that is it. Those are the Ashes of War I wanted to show you today. The various pretty damn meta options and the particularly strong, powerful effects of them. I definitely recommend you look into these, especially for some proper late game builds. Or maybe you just want to roll around like a lightning goat. Your call, man. But if this video helped you, please drop a like so I can keep making more videos like this. And of course, we'll be having more guides and information coming at you on the Rage Gaming channel soon. So for for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.